Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is Dominions 4, The Thrones of Ascension, Sunday, Bloody Sunday. And whoops, I was supposed to start with this screen and not show you everything that's already going on, but uh, that's okay. Just pretend like you didn't see anything before this. We are researching and construction, and we managed to get unique magical items, which opens up a lot of really cool things to us. And uh, it looks like Ebenezer has claimed the Throne of Might, and I believe he is the god of Agartha. We have Surreal Von Beliefs casting Augury. Until I figure out what to do with my Demon Lords, I'm just having them cast some spells, although after this battle report, when I tell you what's going on, I'll show you some other ideas I have for them. We're not finding anything, by the way. We also have Arcane Probing. We finally have our Fairy Queen, who I will show you after these messages. We also Yickley summoned a vampire. Yickley is actually well suited for this because he has both blood and death magic naturally strong enough to summon our vampire counts. So that's kind of what I'm having him do. Remember now, he causes disease, but our vampire counts are immune to disease. So that works pretty well together. And I have another Demon Lord, which I will show you in a minute as well. That leaves one more to go. We have three of the four. We are, as you see, capturing huge amounts of blood slaves. And there was a battle in Pangaea. This is the capital of Pangaea. I am laying siege. Well, I'm attempting to lay siege to their fortress. Let's see how I do. They're starting off by assaulting us with harpies. That is not going very well for them. Next come the centaurs and the satyrs. The centaurs will be difficult. The satyrs, I'm not expecting much from at all. And we're just amazingly overpowered here. We have troop, all of our troops. We have the Zweihandas, the shielded troops, the pikemen. We have our buddy... Unit 171 here, who is now a hero, or was he? Yeah, he was always a hero with quickness. And, oh, wow, look at that. Boom. But also, up here we have Eldrick von Spleenfest leading a, what appears to be a unit of thralls. And their last centaur leader, and their last group of armored pans, or satyrs, Argahan. Look at that. Wow. That was a good battle. We lost 12 wolves, 4 pikeneers, 2 infantry, 15 thralls, and we took out a keeper of traditions and some heavy calf. But we're down to about 250 from where we were, which was 278. Gemur. This is Agartha attacking us. Okay, north of Drag... Well, west of Dragon Ridge. They're throwing some pale ones at us, some uh, crossbowmen, heavy crossbowmen. Quintonian Alchemist. We've seen these guys before. They have an alchemy bonus. Oh, by the way, if you're interested in Agartha, be sure to check out Tokshin's page, because right now he is doing a Let's Play of Agartha. Um, it's Middle Age Agartha, not Late Age, as we are fighting right now. But it's still a lot of fun. I'm, I've been watching it, and I've just been like, wow, Agartha's pretty cool. I've never really played them before. They always seem kind of boring to me. But with these new changes, they're really neat. So I highly recommend you go and give Tokshin's page a look-see and, uh, you know, tell him Marcus Aurelius sent you. So I doubt these fools are going to have any kind of luck against me, but I'm glad that my province defense is charging in to soak up the damage. That is certainly a benefit to me. You'll notice the pale ones don't wear any armor, so they are very easy to kill. And... What are we doing here? Oh, okay, so we're casting some kind of luck spell on our infantry. That's neat. And here comes Adolf von Sternberg. It's two experienced stars. Good for you, buddy. Let's see if we can kill somebody, maybe? Yeah! All right. Good job, Adolf. So what happened here? We lost nothing. Absolutely nothing. All 141 of our troops, or 140 of our troops survived, and we took out a Catonian Alchemist and a number of minor troops. Ooh, Flame Corpse. Interesting. I didn't see that. Kopos. This is us attacking Agartha. Oh, this. I believe this is uh, our Fire Demon. Yes, it is. Raphael. Sorry, it's been a few days. 
And with Christmas and everything, I've kind of lost track of what's going on in the game. And we have Raphael just destroying everything. They are trying to banish him to no avail. Boom. So he's kind of going off the map a little bit. He, he shouldn't be casting Falling Fires, I'll tell you that right now. But he's not injured. He seems to be doing just fine. He has three experience stars. So we'll allow him to continue doing whatever it is he wants to do. And uh, we took out 12 guys. We lost nothing, including a commander. So fantastic. Good for you, Raphael. Faran, this is... Pangea versus my stalwart troops. Oh yes, this is where we are sieging their castle. Actually, this castle, castle, excuse me, folks. This castle has been breached. Um, I'm just waiting for more troops to push forward the attack. But they seem to have no end of commanders. Once again, we have a centaur sage with just a ton of gems. We have a dryad here. We have two pans, two keepers of traditions. A Cataphract Commander, a Mound King, and I guess, and a Minotaur Commander. So, it's a very commander-heavy force. We, of course, are, well, we've seen better days, certainly. But we do have a cool screen of guys in the front. We do have an Infantry Commander here, Andrew Trespass, who is a hero. Heroic Battle Prowess. Fantastic, Andrew. Unfortunately, I'm never going to be using you in battle. Mm, increasing attack skill. Well, I might, you might be one, I might test you out. I might put some weapons on you like a Hulkmeister and see what you can do. Maybe, maybe. I'm not, I don't know if I'm sure. Just increased attack skill is fine and all, but de defense and protection are where it's at. We'll see. And then, of course, we have Gustav the Grave, who is, has heroic endurance, which is probably the best for a Hulkmeister. It means they can go forever with fatigue. The only better one is the one that gives you hit points. And the defense one is pretty decent, too. And Helm Hammerhand. Actually, it's not just Helm. I think... Yeah, Helm and King Midas are both here. So without further ado, let's see what happens. Once again, I hope they attack the centaurs with their Iron Blizzard, but it appears they are attacking the wolves. Which kind of sucks, because wolves pretty much die like no one's business, as you can see. Although the centaurs are running, so that was all it took. They were like, well, we've seen what they've done to those wolves. I don't know if we want to mess with these guys. See, what they don't understand is we have a lot of history with wolves. We raise our own wolves, and so we're very good at taking them out. Oh, and of course, I, I do not want to fail to mention that we also have our friend... Cool Guardian. Our friend King Strategist. Is that... Is that you, King Strategist? No. Oh, where is... Ah, there he is, of course. Hello, sir. King Strategist the Ghoul Commander is leading his ghouls. His ghouls have been in many battles, and they are still hanging strong, although they're all a bit injured. I think it's about time to reinforce him with some more ghouls. I don't have a ton of death gems, so summoning undead is really not particularly on the to-do list. Though, sorry that I keep pausing the battle, but I just want to check something out here. He can, he can lead demons as well, which is something that... Ooh, they're trying to panic my guys, huh? I don't think so, friends. Earth Elemental. Didn't even make it to the front line before getting shrunk. Boom! Alright, this time Hulkmeisters kill some pans. Excellent. Take him out. No, don't... No! Get him! Yeah. Done for. And that is the end of Pangea. We took out a Minotaur commander. Apparently, this, oh, and two, two pans. Okay, two pans, the Centaur Sage. But a lot of these guys still got away. We lost two Pikineers, and that was it. Even our Thrall, our solitary Thrall, survived to tell the tale. Okay, Tenvir. This is us against Pangea. Oh, I think this is Barabel. It is. And this is, of course, Barabel 324. Not crazy man, though he is quite crazy. And he is a man, I, I presume. I mean, a demon man, but 
a man nonetheless. He is liquiding himself and quickening himself. So what we should see is we should see him killing things quite fastly. Let's put it on ludicrous speed and see what happens. Again, they are trying to banish him, but that he will not be banished. He refuses to let himself be banished. Look at that. Wow. Oh, I love my devils, guys. They are just tearing things up. And he took out a priest. Silvermark. Agartha is trying to attack us. Oh, of course, Silvermark. That's their favorite place to attack. And we have... Yeah, I know you. You're a... You're a speaker for the dead, or attendant of the dead. That's right. And we have some entrance guard and some blind fighters. And I hear the undead sound, who someone in the comments referred to as a slurping sound from, like, the bottom of a, of a slurpee. And I think that is the best description I have ever heard for that particular sound, because that is exactly what it sounds like. Okay, come on. We might lose this. I thought I had better province defenses. Nope. Looks like we got him. Whew. Whew. That was a that was a close one, ladies and gentlemen. How did that work? We took out ten units, but their leader got away. We didn't lose anything. We didn't have anything to lose. Okay. Hubarton. Town of the Blue Roofs. Bunch of crossbowmen. And a bunch of I believe these gentlemen are regular infantry. Or oh they, those are heavy infantry. This is regular infantry. Well, what is the difference? Let's zoom in here. Okay, so the heavy infantry are holding their swords up. The, the medium infantry are sticking their swords out at an angle. So they have a short sword, and these guys have a short sword. Okay, well, they, they I mean, they, other than that, they look identical. Oh, I see. These guys have brown boots, and these guys have gray boots. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. And these gentlemen are the light infantry with the the brown pajamas. Boom! Didn't see those heavy cab coming. And pikeneers. And all manner of unpleasantness. Heavy cabs running away. Zoomed in's fun, but it's uh hard to follow sometimes, especially at ludicrous speed. We have our villains over here. And we got them to run. Again, two battles that, you know, could have gone either way. Alright, so what else is going on? A lot of people are, are leaving to the Blood Vortex. Tax plus 200% in Numecria. Fantastic. Defense plus 10. Now here's one that I don't get. Veratha the Fortune Teller has foreseen a major event that will occur in three months' time. Mabasiel, the bringer of misery, has been summoned into the world. In his wake, disease is spreading. I I didn't do it. I, I looked at all my, my devils, and Ophran's oh, been breached. We're destroying Toen, but Pangea is unharmed. They must have a ton of troops in there. So here's where we're at. I'm, I'm moving Barabel up here just to take out whatever defense this castle has. In the meantime, I'm moving this, this army here, which is just Cuneric with a wine bottle. And a bunch of troops, 116 pikemen and some infantry, just to assist in the siege here. And then I'll move them here. I'll meet them, have them meet up with these fellows. And then finally down to Pangea. And then that should be the end of Pangea in this world. Meanwhile, we are as soon as this castle falls, we are just about ready to drop the hammer on Agartha. Moving these guys up and these guys down. We're just not ready for that yet. I'm waiting another turn, having everybody sit patiently while that takes place. DOS24680 is building a lab here because this is going to be his little home. He causes disease, but there's no one here for him to disease. And the cool thing about this is if you take a look at him, he is built for two particular spells. One, of course, you've seen already. That's the Reign of Toads, which is a... Well, it's not a global spell, but it's a, it's a spell that can af affect provinces far away. But what he's also good at is... Oh, what am I doing? smart thing to do instead would be to go to oh I can't cast spells okay well anyways he can do the crossbreeding if you remember the crossbreeding spell which gets a bunch of foul spawns and occasionally does something cool like a chimera he is hand built for that blood and nature next I want to introduce you to 
You can't even see his name through his wings, but Tokshin. Tokshin, the Lord of Hell. Tokshin is one of the demon lords. He will serve a summoner knowing that the summoner will surrender his soul when he dies. Man, everybody's trying to get a piece of Katarina's soul. Belphegor is a seducer of men and uses gold to sow discord. Fathers sell their sons and daughters to the demon, and his host of corrupted souls is always growing. The presence of the demon causes the faithful to forget their god and serve the beast. The dominion of pretender gods wanes in the province where Belphegor passes. So he is a heretic. He is a pretty strong heretic of five. I'm going to get some priests in here to counterbalance him. Like Surreal Von Beliefs, he summons, auto summons blood slaves, because of course we need some of those. And, uh, I mean, that being that we don't. And he's also horror marked, like Das was, which is very strange. I'm not sure if they naturally come like that, or if there's something about Surreal Von Beliefs that causes horror marking to other units in the area. Although, from what I could tell, oh, yeah. It must be surreal because Katarina is horror marked. Now this is a problem. This is a pretty big problem. Because that means horrors are going to be coming after her and she is just a, a little human person. That's kind of lame. Um, it doesn't say anywhere that he horror marks people, but that has to be the case because everybody here is horror marked. Let's see if... Well, the troops aren't. No, oh, he, he he gets slaves that are... That's cool. But yeah, so these guys aren't horror marked. I have no idea. Maybe there's something here horror marking people. I don't know. But the problem is you can't tell how strong the horror mark is. So I immediately have to get her back to home. And I gotta protect her. I have to surround her with, with amazing bodyguards. And uh, just hope and pray for the best. I mean, she can be resurrected if she dies. And the game's nearly over, but... Yeah, and that's, that's not good. So once she summons this new demon lord, I'm getting her out of here. And I was going to leave Tokshin here, but... I don't, I don't want him to get more horror marks, so we'll move him out. We're going to keep all of our demon lords in separate provinces. And you know what, Surreal? We're going to get you out of here, too. Um, You can go here. So that's where my, my demon lords are going to be. Eventually, I'll figure out a better way of doing it because I need to be able to move troops up here without fear of them getting horror marked. I'm not sure if he's the only one that does it or if maybe just the summoning of them does it. If somebody knows, please let me know. But So they're moving out and she's summoning the last one and then she's going to get protected by everybody I can muster. Meanwhile, I'm moving troops around. You can tell my upkeep's really high. My money's really down. The one thing I have plenty of is blood slaves. So let me tell you first of all what my plans are. Dragon Strike. He's ready to go. He's all outfitted up. I'm trying to build an assembly line for the correct items for these super champions, super combatants. What's cool about Dragon Strike, if you'll remember, is that he automatically gets fire gems. So I'm researching enchantment in order to get this really cool spell called Heat from Hell. It requires two fire gems, but what it does is it makes the entire battlefield hot. And so basically everybody falls unconscious that isn't protected by heat. And of course, rough, uh, Dragon Strike is. So this is a great spell for him. He basically can cast it and just mind his own business and pretty soon everybody's going to die. The only thing I got to worry about is that he doesn't fatigue out. Um, he does have a little bit of reinvigoration too, which is not a lot. So we'll see how that goes. We'll attack an easy province first, but I think it'll be neat. Um, next we have... Oh, our fairy queen, of course. Oh, and I'm moving out Ascalon as well. He's ready to go and Vigdis is almost there. Hippolyta. Now she, I believe in Dominions 3, she cured afflictions, but now in Dominions 4, she cures disease. She also recuperates, and she summons allies. But you know what? That's not what I'm going to... I have her doing that, but that's not what I'm going to have her do, actually. I'm going to have her fly to all my mountain provinces, and she is going to search for air sites, because I don't have enough air gems to cast the remote spell, and that's just how I'm going to do it. She has level 3, so she can get most of them. And that's, hopefully, by the end of the game, I'll have some air sites. Air sites are more likely to be found in provinces with mountains. So that's why I'm checking those out. Let's see, what else? So, Yikali casts ba uh, vampires. I have Vampire Batman here. And uh, he's been in every single of my LPs. There was, of course, regular Batman in Ur. But looking back on it, he should have been Enkidu Batman. And then there was... Uh, Ghost Batman in my Lemuria mini showcase, and then finally there was Bakemono Batman in my failed Shinuyama campaign. So now I have Vampire Batman. And he, Yikali is going to be summoning more vampires, and he's moving up here just to his side 
what I'm going to be doing with him. I also am having this gentleman down here. Um, oh, let me introduce you to Twink Professional, by the way. Twink Professional is going to be boosting himself up in blood so that he can summon Demon Knights, which is something that, by the way, both Surreal Von Beliefs... Well, no, Surreal can't. I'm sorry. Surreal can summon Devils and Imps and even Arch Devils, but Tokshin, since he has Earth and Blood, will be able to summon Demon Knights as well. So I have two built-in Demon Knight Summoners. I have a Devil Summoner with Surreal Von Beliefs, and I have, if I need a crossbreeding summoner of this guy. So of the four different types of demons, right, there's the ice, the ice demons, which I believe any of my ice devils can do. Probably Andric would be the best. He has to, I'm not sure. Maybe he, maybe he would, maybe he wouldn't. But um, I know that, was it Barbell? Could actually like summon them just by summoning allies. And then there's the devils, which Surreal can do. There's the demon knights, which these two guys can do. And then finally, there's going to be the air demons. And I think the next demon lord is going to be an air demon lord. So he'll be able to summon the air demons, or the storm demons, I guess, as they're called. And the shadow demons can be summoned by Darkhawk, I believe. And he, he and Yaknakula are forging items to improve our death. But anyways, when I was coming over here, Childebert is forging crystal coins, which are an earth and astral item that give you astral bonus. I gave the first one to Olga, so now she has... Well, I'm gonna... Yeah, and I'm gonna give her a hat. She's forging a new hat, so she'll have three astral and three nature. She can forge moonbind bracelets and do other things with that, so that's that's valuable. Next, he's forging, of course, the amulets of, of arrow protection, which is pretty much necessary against Agartha. I'm this close to deciding to send out Electo by himself, simply because he can spell himself up pretty well with his earth he can make himself for example iron skinned he can reinvigorate himself and he has a ton of hit points but i might give him a an arrow fend he already has natural reinvigoration plus his earth spell will increase that so or regeneration i'm sorry so i don't necessarily need to give him reinvigoration or regeneration he has no fatigue or encumbrance so i could give him the heaviest armor in the game and it wouldn't cause him to slow down or get fatigued which is awesome so I might do that to increase his protection, but then I wouldn't be able to make him ethereal. So I'm, I'm still deciding what to do with Electo. And where are we at then? Um, oh, by the way, just in case you want to know, Twink Professional, eventually when I have more, he, when he has more blood power, the spell that he is going to be casting is going to be Infernal Crusade, which costs 50 blood slaves and gives you, well, it won't tell you, I guess. Oh yeah, gives you 10 or more demon knights. So that's very good. And we are just holding the south line, as I said, awaiting to see what happens in this next turn. And we're sieging a bunch of castles. So there you go. And I will show you everything that happens as a result of this, and we'll call it an episode. Enchantment is completed. Fantastic. We have heat from hell. Another demon lord has been bound. Another vampire count has been bound. No fire sites. A ton of blood slaves. Baron von Kroc, why are you not doing very well? Maybe because you need help. Phrygia. Ah, yes. Dragon Strike. Or not Dragon Strike, I'm sorry. Uh, Raphael. And Raphael is apparently setting the foliage on fire. And he's doing his usual terror. All right. So, he took out, well, no one, really. Kopos. Agartha is attacking my forces. Okay, this is where they just were. I don't even know if we have defense here, do we? Well, a little bit. A little bit. We have some cab and some crossbowmen. Eh, we'll see how it, how it works. Oh, that didn't do very well at all. But, we're holding up against their entrance guards. We still might lose this, but if we do win, it's because of our cav. And the entrance guards are fleeing. Or they're chasing after my guy. I'm not sure which one. We'll find out now. Nope, they're fleeing. Okay. So it's a crossbow battle, I guess. And their guys are better suited for it than mine, honestly. They're heavier armed. And they are charging, and we got them. All right. Whew. 
Ooh, me. All right. Winna. This is us attacking Pangea. Oh, yes, of course. This is Barabel. And I will get him out of here because I don't want him sieging the castle by himself. I just want to see what he can do to clear out the... Whoop. Oh, harpies, yes. Okay. Okay, he's spelling himself up. Come on, take out the... Oh, boom! Oh, wow. Now, I don't think they can trample him. Nope, they can't. There will be no trampling today, fellas. So we finally, after, what, 100 turns? We have found, not 100 turns, but a lot of turns, we have found the solution to Mintars, and that is Barabel. Oh, I keep thinking he's going to jump to the end of the screen like uh, like Raphael, because, he, you know, they fly, but Barabel does not fly. He just runs really, really fast. Boom! Boom. Oh, that is the luckiest commander in the whole world ever. One hit, he got three afflictions. <laughs> nice. And that was the end of him. All right. Excellent. We took out a commander and nine troops. And Sinaf. Okay, I don't think we have anything here. So I think Agartha is going to win this one. Well... I put in some pretty heavy PD, actually. But they're not heavy cav. They are, unfortunately, light cav. Oh, and they have those cave drakes that I hate so much. Oof, that was a bad hit. Yikes. All right, so perhaps, perhaps not victory this time around. Or perhaps victory. I just, I can never tell sometimes, man. It looks like we're getting creamed and then, hello, you win. Okay. Tons of people. Bokan, population unrest. Wolves. The wolves are hungry this winter, and locals are being attacked and killed by the score. Oh, my. A band of robbers has been rooted out. Yes, I like that. A prospector has found a small gold deposit. Children are disappearing at night. There was a battle in Vokan. Interesting. What... Lopped the dire wolf. Now, I don't believe this is a jerk spell. Maybe it is, but those usually resolve before regular combat, not after. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> you're, you're in no, no shape to fight Hokemeisters and Heavy Cav. Okay, a very deadly disease. Uh oh. 922 or 920 people. This is an even stronger disease than DOS 24680. Ernst was discovered and attacked. I think this is the Throne Province. We'll see. Ferran and Towin have been breached. Pangea is being started or is starting to be taken down. Winna is unharmed and Phrygia is unharmed, and that's fine because both of my Demon Lords or my Ice Devils are there, so we don't expect much from that. All right, so let's see who's who. Oh, okay. Wow, and you. Finally, we have Tokshin, we have DOS24680, we have Surreal Bomb Beliefs. So this one will be Marcus Aurelius. I know, it's the first time I've ever immortalized myself in a uh, in one of my LPs. So this gentleman does not have a head. Marcus Aurelius is the Lord of the Plague Wind. He is a huge, feathery humanoid with four great wings, no head, and the legs of a hen. His, uh, Marcus Aurelius is one of the demon lords. He will serve his summoner, knowing that the summoner will surrender his soul when he dies. Marcus Aurelius is the bringer of storms and the plague wind of the desert, the dry wind from the east that brings disease and suffering. So he is storm power. He is a reaper of twice as strong as Das. He's blind. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Demon. Um, is it the bad kind of blind? So yeah, it's a good kind of blind, which just means he doesn't need to see. And he has air, death, and blood, so he can summon the storm demons. But i got to figure out what to do with him, because I do not want Katarina von Ulm to be diseased. In fact, I'm immediately moving her back home. Now, her horror mark, I, I cannot... She's been in the same province with Surreal for, what, three turns now? So it could be could be quite significant. I, I don't know. Anselm has been horror marked as well. But Marcus Aurelius has not, which means that Surreal was the problem. And now, let's get back Axel out of there. And here he is with all of his slaves. So first thing he's going to do is he's going to construct a lab. 
and he'll just hang out here. Eventually, when that lab is done, we'll give the blood slaves away. Doss's lab has been completed, so I'll do some fun things with him. Tokshin, you are also going to construct a lab if I can afford it. Barely. And we're just going to leave Marcus Aurelius here, I guess. Anselm, you can hang out with him and get disease. No, I don't want you to get disease. That's not right. It's not good to do. Yickley, so Yickley, Doss, and Marcus Aurelius all cause disease. So we're, we have a lot of disease going on here, man. It's crazy. This, that's a problem with the Demon Lords. They are very powerful, but they have negatives that go along with the positives. For example, one's a heretic. One raises unrest. Two of them cause disease. One of them causes horror marks. So it's it's just difficult times. And we have another vampire here. Who are you going to be? You are going to be Dave the Cave. Welcome to the team, Dave. And we're going to get you out of here before you get diseased. Aren't we? Oh, right. Let's get rid of your entourage. All right. So Dave's going there. So I guess the way we're going to play this is we're going to move troops up through this little corridor. It doesn't appear as if Tokshin does anything bad to people. He He's a heretic, but it doesn't appear that he causes any harm to troops that are nearby. So that will move them up through here, and we'll leave these two, well, these three pretty much safe and alone so they can summon their demon armies once the time is right for that. And now we have these guys here. Yep, we've already lost one, so we're down to nine. So let's instill uprising, first of all, and hopefully... Doss is close enough to send over some frogs, and he can. Excellent. So that'll help with the unrest as well. That's a good use for him, actually. I'm going to use him to shut down castles along with as many of these guys as survive. But remember, the defense is 75, which is ridiculous. And... Okay, well, anyways, I've taken up plenty of your time. I will definitely figure out what I'm going to do, and we'll see all that next turn. But obviously, the focus is going to be moving these armies down. We're going to take Toen. We're going to take... Dun, 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 dun. We're going to take Faran. We're going to take Winna, and then we're going to move down and finally take Pangea. And then Pangea is out of it. And then we're just going to move against Agartha from both sides. They will have no chance, no chance whatsoever. They will fall. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate your feedback and your comments. Please like and subscribe if you can or would like to. Have a good one, everyone.